Amy and Chip are professional storytellers. They run snail tales and perform stories without using a book at all sorts of locations and to all kinds of people. Why do we tell stories? Telling stories is one of the first inventions that human beings had which marked us as different from all of the other cavemen. It was really our way of planning what we were going to do in the future based on what we had done in the past. And it was the development of that imagination, um, education and, and inventing, if you like, that helped us to survive where other cavemen didn't. What do we learn from stories? Stories are a testing ground for real life because they invite you to put yourself in the place of a main character who is facing problems and living their life and having to react to things. And so stories invite the questions, what would I do in that situation? What would be the right thing to do? There are questions of morality and problem solving um, and all of those help you to think about the other people around you, how many different points of view there are and how many different ways of tackling a problem there can be so that you can decide not only what you would do but also begin to understand why the character might make the choices that they do and so why other people might make the choices that they do. Do all stories follow a pattern? All stories have the same shape because all stories have a problem in the middle. Oh, look! Often a story will start with a character who wishes for something or wants something and then the first thing that will happen in the story is that there will be a barrier to the character getting that wish. There will be a problem. And all stories go towards a resolution the way that the character solves that problem or overcomes it. Or if they don't, the resolution of the story is about how the character has been shaped by that experience of not being able to overcome a problem. The problem is what gives the story its shape, what makes it into a story instead of just a description. It's like a tent pole in a tent. Without the pole, a tent is just flat canvas. And without a problem, a story is not really a story. It's just some descriptions. Isn't storytelling just for children? I guess storytelling is commonly seen as something that is done for children because it is, or it certainly used to be, at the heart of home life. We had the bedtime story where parents would share storytelling with their children. It wasn't really just about teaching children. Uh, it started as this way of helping human beings to survive. If you think about it now, we also have storytelling in politics, we have storytelling in um, marketing, we have storytelling in um, religion. There are so many places where storytelling is the heart of the community, and that is not just about children. It is very much an all-age art form. Why are stories so useful? Scientists have shown in many experiments how if you create a narrative for something, it can help you to remember things. And we did an experiment ourselves actually just a few years ago where um, we separated some children into two groups and some children were given some facts to learn and the other group were told a story which contained the facts. When we tested the children afterwards, those who'd heard the story had remembered more facts than those who were told to learn them. Those children had not been told to remember anything. They had just been given a story 
and yet they had remembered more. What's the role of the storyteller? But with oral storytelling, the real creative work is done by the audience. It's, it's done with, with their own creativity in their heads. So a better way to think of it is that we're like the conductors of an orchestra and every single imagination in the audience is like an instrument in the orchestra because they're all creating their different sounds or different pictures, every single head will have a different image in it from the, the story that you're telling. And your job as a storyteller really is just to keep everybody on the same page and at the same point in the story. Is modern technology a threat to traditional storytelling? I think the first big challenge that technology gave to storytelling was probably the printing press. Because before that, stories were passed on by word of mouth much more. Books were very expensive, had to be copied out very slowly and were difficult to get hold of. But after the printing press, people could read the stories and so they started telling them less. And many stories became locked in at that point to the form that they'd had at the time. Stories, I think, stopped developing. Um, from the printing press all the way to other um, inventions like theatre and cinema, which were giving a real rigidity to the stories that people were hearing. So they didn't have a chance to exercise their imagination. There wasn't any of the interactivity that was there in traditional storytelling. What social media has done, though, is it has almost allowed us to go back to the bygone era where the storyteller wouldn't just be telling the story but would be having the audience there to help them shape it and create it with the challenge of things like Twitter, where you have to write a very short message, and doing that is almost like a poem. In fact, all these different mediums are opening storytelling up again, because it's once again about passing on directly and through word of mouth, and stories changing very quickly. And I think that's happening again now. What's your favourite story? My favourite story is one called Ming Lo and the Moving Mountain. And in the story, a man wants to move a mountain away from his house. It's very funny. He goes around the side of the mountain to find a wise man to ask him how to move the mountain, and he's sent back with lots of different methods that just aren't going to move the mountain at all. And in the end... The wise man tells him that he must dance the dance of the moving mountain. And he must do that by closing his eyes, facing the mountain, and then putting his right foot behind his left foot, and his left foot behind his right foot, and his right foot behind his left foot, and doing it a thousand times. And when he opens his eyes, the mountain will have moved. And of course he does it, and the mountain is far away on the distant horizon. I love telling that story especially in schools, because the littlest children don't get it. So the older ones start to giggle. The ones at the back are laughing, and the little children at the front are going, wow, he moved a mountain. And, of course, that's the whole point of the story. And, of course, his problem has been solved. He's away from the mountain. But he's done it all using imagination, and that's exactly what storytelling does.